Yeah, for sure. Well, man, it's great to meet you. I want to begin our conversation with, it's coming up on the four year anniversary of this pandemic. How did you survive the pandemic and how did it change you? So when the pandemic popped, uh, so I was actually working with Tony Robbins when all of the pandemic started, yeah. uh, being at an events company that had a lot of events on the books and no idea how the heck we were going to be fulfilling those. Uh, yeah, that was actually where I, I actually left my career at that point in time versus digging into the career. So yeah, when, when pandemic hit, I went, okay, I'm going to bet on myself. I'm going to go all in and I'm going to bring my years of expertise. And that's actually what was the catalyst for launching my own, my own business. So let's get to your business right now and exactly what you do. I'm going to put you in front of a bunch of third graders. It's career day. And one of the kids <laughs> is curious and they're like, Hey, what do you do for a living? How do you answer that child? So we help coaches, consultants, and experts monetize their message and build a business that's profitable. No, that, those might be too big of words for third graders, but <laughs> they, the they, pro they, they probably get it. I think, I think, yeah, there'd probably be an acumen. What, what did you want to be in the third grade? What was your dream? Oh, third grade, man, what was I into back then? I was really into surfing and martial arts. So I don't even think I was contemplating business down the line, but uh, yeah, no, I, I was very much into uh, being outside, being in the water. And when I wasn't outside in the water, I was inside training in martial arts. So where are you from California? Originally from San Diego, Orange County. And then, uh, yeah, my, my wife and I, we actually, we left in 2016. Uh, we traveled for a number of years, didn't know where we wanted to land. Yeah. Um, when we did land in Colorado, we were actually here for a concert down near where, where you ended up spending some time down in uh, Castle Rock. But we, uh, we came to see our favorite band at the time and we just fell in love with the mountains and just the, the whole vibe that was here. Yeah, it's, it's wonderful. So let me ask you this. Talk to me a little bit about your path to where you got today, how you got to the point where you were with the Anthony Robbins organization. And even before that, how did this become the seed that grew into who you are in your company is today? Yeah. So when I was, uh, let's see, my senior year of high school, I was actually suicidal. Um, it was a pretty, pretty rough patch of time. And my uncle actually took me under his wing and really started mentoring me. And he started putting me in Tony Robbins content, Bob Proctor, uh, you know, just a ton of different people in the, the training space as a, a way of getting my head screwed on straight. I uh, went to work with my uncle's mentor in Los Angeles. So he was actually a real estate trainer. Got recruited from there to work with the largest coaching company in, in the world at that point, a gentleman named Brian Buffini. So he's, yeah. he's in the real estate zone. I got fired from there, which is actually a really fascinating piece because I thought my, you know what, didn't stink. And I threw around my ego like I was the, the head honcho. Um, that didn't go over very well. So I got fired from there, launched my own coaching business the next day. And from that point on, actually, as I really, I got humbled in that experience. And I, I just went all in on personal development, went all in on sales training, went all in on marketing. And in the course of that, I, got, I actually got recruited by Tony. So yeah, that was really the, the starting point was I got recruited and brought into his world. This was back in 2006, 2007. Uh, so remember 2008 then hit, which made it very, very interesting in the world. Yeah. So yeah. had, had to cut my teeth with Tony in a, in a window of time that was very, uh, we'll just call it challenging. Right. So it was a very different, different world being able to, to be successful in business at that point. When you talk about this realm of, of like motivating people, Anthony Robbins is on the top of the mountain. So to be tapped by someone like that had to be an extraordinary moment for you. It's funny. So on my drive into my first day, I was just like over the moon. I'm like, holy crap, I'm going to go work with the biggest name in the game. And I had all these visions in my head of what it was going to look like and feel like. And I literally, I, Tony, here's this episode. He's going to yell at me. But <laughs> my first day walking in, you know, the HR is taking me to my cubicle space. And I kid you not, the cubicle walls were falling in. Like the, the brackets have been broken. Uh, there was no chair at the desk somebody rather large had sat in the middle of the desk. So it was buckled in. And so the drawers were falling out and I'm like, what the heck just happened? And then first person walks by and they tap the desk and they go, just want to let you know the last three people that, that sat at that desk, they didn't make it past 90 days. Wow. I'm like, like, where the heck did I just start my, <laughs> my new, my new dream <laughs> job is chaos. 
Uh, and so that first day I, I took my lunch break and I went to Home Depot and I, I bought all the parts to fix my cubicle space and to fix the desk. And, um, you know, I went and bought a Pilates ball because that's all I could afford at that point in terms of having a chair to sit on. And I just, I figured it out just because I was, I was in that space of whatever the heck it takes. I knew that I had something magical working with Tony. Um, the packaging wasn't exactly what I thought it was going to be showing yeah. up on that first day, but yeah, it was, it was awesome. And at the same time, it was like, whoa, okay, this is, this is, uh, you know, the people that were there that were successful, they were successful in spite of circumstance. They were, they were just all in on, on the outcome. So the one thing probably being around someone like Tony Robbins is by osmosis, you're going to pick up a lot of really good things. But what what did he give you that has enabled you to be your own business owner and to get to a point where you're doing a lot of the things that he's inspired the world to become? Great question. Um, there's, there's a laundry list of things, ha having been in his orbit for, for 15 years and uh, just the craziness that we got to do together. Um, and this might sound overly simplistic, but certainty. So from that is when the world is melting down, when people are in their moments of uncertainty, it's the leaders that have the most amount of certainty. They're the ones who get to influence. They're the ones who get to rise above. They're the ones who everybody turns to and they listen to and they want to go to because when when there's chaos, people are looking for a direction out. And so that, that for me was massive um, for both the teams that I oversaw for Tony, even with how I communicated with Tony. Um, he's a master of communication. And so he reads body language and he's listening to tonality. If there is a sliver of doubt in your body or in your, your tone, he's going to chew it up and spit it out and he's going to dig in. And so I had to be really freaking certain if I brought something to him, if I was presenting him with something, I had to own every ounce of that. And that carries over into everything that carries over in my relationship, how I raise my kids, how I communicate with my kids, how I, you know, encourage my kids to communicate. Um, but also within the business and how we help other people bring that much certainty to their clientele. So who's been a hero for you in your life? <laughs> there's a lot. There's also that, that, you know, that element of don't meet your heroes. There's, there's definitely a few people I met in person and I'm like, why the heck did I look up to that person? <laughs> um, honestly, my, my, my wife, my mother and my uncle, th those three have been the three biggest, most influential. And then I, I would say Tony, was, he'd be right up there as number four. Um, you know, with, if I kind of go in reverse order. So for Tony, just cause I got to be at the, I got to seat at the table, um, getting to witness how he lived his life was just an incredible inspiration of what's possible. Uh, his money psychology was just insane. Um, how he treated people was just um, incredible. Um, it was just really magical getting to see him, not just on stage or when he's, you know, on camera per se, but actually getting to see him in a one-on-one -on -one capacity and how he treated people magic. Um, my uncle, I, I got to witness his entire life, you know, him going training to be a Navy SEAL and him taking me under his wing and just literally being there at every step and every turn and how he shows, he shows up to life very similar to Tony. Uh, my mom just enduring every piece of what she's endured in her life. And the fact that she's still kicking ass yeah. um, and my, my wife on the, as the fourth person that's been that um, she's just been there at every step shows up constant and she's just been a rock for me in, in regards to all of, all of uh, our life. So if you could meet one person alive on the planet right now that you find fascinating, that you haven't met yet, who would it be? It, it's funny because we, uh, we just went and saw the Bob Marley movie. Oh, yeah. I was like, man, if there was any musician I could have seen when he was alive, I'm like, he would have actually been such a cool person to go see. Uh, somebody who's alive right now. Ooh, that's so interesting. It, it, it's funny because I don't know if I've thought about it. Who, who would I want to meet? It's interesting because I've gotten to meet so many fascinating characters over the course of time, like Peter Diamantis, who's just, it'd actually be fun to sit down with him again. Or have yeah. you seen any of his work? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, we just recently got to, to sit down with Rory Vaden. He's somebody that we're working with, with a brand builders group. He's a fascinating character. Um, somebody I haven't met. I honestly don't know. Yeah, that's I've, fine. That's an answer. That, that's, yeah. that's totally fine. So let me ask you this. What is your ultimate aim when you wake up every day what 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 gets you going what's the fuel to not only help others but to evolve and grow as a human yourself for me it's uh part of the thing that juices me is when i see the light turn on in other people and we've 
we have such an interesting niched market where we help if we call them light warriors or we get to call them uh, coaches, consultants, pe people that are out there to make a, a true difference in the world. We bring that element to the game that they usually lack, which is the, the other side of the brain, which is how do you build a business? How do you go get clients? How can you do that full time? But for us, really, what is our, our fire for me specifically? I love knowing that I can help somebody who can actually go out and help you know, hundreds, if not thousands, if not millions of people. So knowing that we get to be the conduit that can help that happen, and we see the light turn on in that person, and then they can go have that ripple effect of, of change and impact, it's, there's nothing like it. So being the captain of your own company and ship right now, what's been one of your favorite success stories so far? <laughs> we had somebody last week that was, uh, she was sharing one of her celebrations in our, in our mastermind. She had spent the last three months, had not enrolled one client into her, her world. And her celebration this week, she came onto the call and she was in tears. And I'm like, at first I'm like, uh-oh, what, what's going on? And she goes, my goal this month was to enroll five people. She goes, I enrolled five people yesterday and I enrolled two people this morning. She goes, I'm literally seven for seven enrolling people in my program. She goes, I didn't enroll anybody for 90 days, went three months, not bringing in any revenue. And I just made all the revenue back in two days. Wow. That's amazing. So let's say you have a dream tonight you run into the 18 year old version of you you can give that young version of you a piece of advice based on the wisdom you've gained the life you've led what advice would you impart on your young version uh the answers are in the question so ask better questions you'll get better answers um when i look at the just the status of where the world's at and if i look at society as a whole we have done a i'm just gonna call it a piss poor job of questioning We've got a school system that's now predicated on teaching people how, and that's the main question. How, how can I make money? How can I get a job? How can I, how can I graduate high school? How can I get into a good college? How can I pass an exam with a hangover? Right. It's like, it's, it's just, we've, we've conditioned society with a lot of how questioning and we only get how answers. And the reality is on my, my, my personal perspective is that we need to start asking a lot more who questions. So if I could go back to my 18 year old version of myself, I'd say, start asking more, who, who do you need to be? Who do you need to get in the room with? Who can you show up as today? Who are you at your core? Who, who, or what are your values? Um, that would have saved me so many headaches. It would have cut through so much noise. Um, if I had just focused on that, and it's actually an interesting little connection loop of who would I want to meet? It's really fascinating. Every single person I've ever wanted to meet. I don't know if I was born without the fear of it, but I just went, okay, I'm going to meet them. And I put myself in the room with them. Yeah. And so that I think hooks together where I would have probably done that a hell of a lot sooner. Yeah. Because your proximity is everything. Proximity yeah. truly is power. And so I, I would have put myself in the room with the biggest names doing the biggest things. Um, Cause it would just open that many doors that many, that much quicker. So what's the best advice you've ever gotten? <laughs> It was interesting. When, so when I got fired from Buffini, my uncle, so that, that night I was in tears. So I was, I was like, oh, I thought I was going to climb the corporate ladder. The best advice he said is he said, get up at tomorrow at 5 a.m. and put on your suit and meet me at the gym. And so I'm like, why am I putting on my suit going to the gym? He goes, don't put on your suit yet. Bring your suit to the gym. But he met me at 5 a.m. in the morning and I had just gotten fired. We worked out, trained harder than we'd ever trained before, took a shower and he goes, put on your suit. And he goes, we're going to launch a business today. He goes, you're not the circumstances of yesterday. He's like, you get to be, you get to decide who you are today, show up with the result. And I'm like, that, that's how I've played ever since. So of all of the things that you've done professionally in your life up to this point, what are you the proudest of? Ooh. Ah, there's so many successes and struggles that I had, especially in working with Tony, because he always raised the bar. And this might sound crazy, but was having the courage to leave. Yeah. Right. So my identity was so wrapped into, you know, being Tony's right hand guy and just the results that I got there. Having the courage, especially in the midst of COVID, when that popped, to go, you know what? I've got the muscle. I know how I can help the world. And I don't know what it looks like, but I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take that courage and I'm I'm ready to step out of that umbrella. Um, honestly, that for me was the, if I look back at the successes of that, um, that's in the corporate realm in terms of personally with my, my wife and my kids, we've, we've done so many cool, rad things over time. So 
Yeah. So let me ask you this. The one thing about Tony Robbins, I remember growing up and he was on TV and there was a level of him where it was like, I thought it was something that might pass just because that's the way we were when we were kids. You know, we had all these preachers that would be up on stage and then they'd go away. But Tony Robbins has not only remained relevant, he's remained kind of timeless. And I'm starting to see when I interview and talk to people that have been around him, why? But in your words, why is this man as relevant, if not more relevant now than he ever has been in his life? Uh, I'll, I'll share one, what, what I think my reasoning is for it. And then I'll share something that he said that really just kind of catalyzed that. He is mission driven, not monetary driven. And there's so many people in the space that are chasing the almighty dollar. And I don't think there's anything wrong with getting compensated at a very high level for the value you provide. But his driver is the mission of helping people. His driver is impacting and improving people's lives. And that's where he gets his fuel from. Um, he's never let go of the mission. And I see so many people that have fallen flat on their face. As soon as they let go of that mission, or as soon as they buy into their ego, or as soon as they give into that temptation, they blow up their world. Um, and there's, there's an interesting, so here's, here's the sentiment that he said, there's somebody, so actually I went, it was just Tony and I, we went to see a movie and he had picked me up and I, I had no idea what was going to be happening. And he goes, Hey, we're going to go to the movies. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. What he didn't share with me is that he rented out the entire theater. <laughs> so we got to sit in the movie theater with nobody else there, but there was somebody out in front that came up and shook his hand. And he goes, I'm going to be you one day and I'm going to catch you. And Tony smiled and he put his hand on the guy's back and he goes, I just want to let you know, by the time you catch up to where I'm at, I'm going to be that much further down the road. And he goes, I welcome you to catch me because that means you're going to help other people. So please do your best. Yeah. So there's this, this drive to help other people be greater for humanity, but he also has this certainty in his soul that he's not stopping. He's not going to stop moving. And he's just going to keep, he's going to keep doing what he's doing. So there's a lot of people out there that want to be a better version of themselves. They want to, they want to, they want to get to a better place for anyone out there that's listening. That is curious as to what you can offer them. What would you say to them right now to come on in? Let's talk. Let's get there. Yeah. There, there's a couple of different ways, but one is if you, if you know, you have a message and you have a mission and you want to figure out how the heck can I monetize that? How can I turn that into a business? How can I, how can I build something around that? So I can get out of my J O B. Uh, we can help there. Um, by the way, if anybody wants to learn more about that, by all means, let us know. Um, we actually give that whole training away for free. Um, the second piece, if you're going, hey, I already have a coaching or a, a service offering that's available and I need to figure out how to scale that so I can reach more people. Um, we have a number of ways to support that between our masterminds and our trainings and our events and the different pieces that we do. So Brooke, at the end of the day, everyone has a perception of you, family, friends, clients, colleagues, but you run the show. What's your perception of you? Who do you think you are? Incredibly good looking. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, <laughs> I like it. Uh, who am I? I'm, I'm committed and I'm dedicated, man. That's that's the biggest thing. I I, I literally walk into the room with my heart first. Um, I just love helping people. And for, for me, that's that's what, when I pass on one day, is that's what I want to be remembered as. The guy who cared so much. He was willing to do whatever it took to help others. Um, and in turn, I was rewarded rewarded for it. So. Yeah, I love it. So if anyone out there wants the help, the motivation, the good business, what do they do to reach out and to find out and to get in touch? Yeah, uh, empirepartners.io. So it's the easiest way to get there. Uh, empirepartners.io is the, our, our website. If you have questions, anybody who's there, we're, we're down to help at any level. So um, yeah, we're, we're in the game. And so that, that's the other important piece. Not only are we teaching elements that's from the past, we're applying the same stuff that we're teaching. So. Yeah, we'd love to help anyone who wants to monetize their message or they want to grow their their world. Yeah, we're here to help. Excellent. Brooke, this has been wonderful. Thank you, sir, for your words, for your story. Best of luck with everything. Oh, thank you, Joe. Appreciate it, man. Thank you. You bet. Take care.